All right, welcome to Code Corner from Mayfield Renewables. My name is Ryan Mayfield. And in this um, edition of Code Corner, we're going to talk about the National Electrical Code 2020 version, Article 691, which is large scale PV electric supply stations. So this is typically in our Code Corners, we go over specific sections within different uh, articles of code. But this time we're going to focus really on the entire article. It's a pretty short article. It's only got 10 different sections within it. So I'm going to point out what the what the big highlights are and kind of some of the areas to focus in on uh, if you are doing these large scale installations. So first, let's talk about the scope and Article 691, like every other article within NEC, we have a scope. And so you see that language here on the screen, and that says that this article covers installation of large scale PV systems with an inverter generating capacity of over 5,000 kilowatts and not under the exclusive control of the utility. So the 5,000 kilowatts, that's the same as five megawatts, it's not a huge system really anymore uh, these days, but it is a large system. And then the not under the exclusive control of the utility. The other thing that's in this scope in this first sentence is in talking about the generating capacity. So that is something that shows up in back in 690 as well. And so we need to know what generating capacity is. So if you look at that, it's actually the AC output of the inverters, the sum of the inverters, the AC power output, the continuous power output at 40 degrees C. So for our large scale systems, it's just good to know, you know, what does that mean? Five. 5,000 kilowatts, what's the threshold? It's it's an AC value and it's a very specific value of the inverter output. So, and again, that shows up back in 690. Uh, that And so the, the definition is, is the same. One thing I wanted to point out too was that there's an informational note in the scope. And so it talks about how, so the informational note's not part of code. It's again, it's just information, but it um, clearly calls out that these systems are operated for the sole purpose of providing electric supply to a system operated by a regulated utility. So these are systems that are interactive with the utility and they're, they're power plants. And so they're working with the utility to supply that power. So just a little bit differentiation, we're starting to see microgrids and we're starting to see other systems like that. So, you know, there's very clear, this is what this system was intended for. And then also, it's not on the screen, but the section 691.4 talks about the uh, special requirements. And a couple things to note in there, I didn't want to list out the entire language here, but the access is limited to authorized personnel only. So there's, you know, it's behind a fence, it's it's guarded, it's not anybody can walk right up to it. And uh, the loads that are associated, so if there's loads inside uh, for the array, they're associated with that array. So they're the SCADA, the DAS monitoring, anything specific uh, for the PV array itself. And then the other big one is that these systems are not installed on buildings. So this is kind of a, a key one here because there are systems that are greater than five megawatts that are installed on buildings, but 691.4 clearly says that these large scale PV systems to meet the requirements and have to follow the 691 rules, they uh, cannot be installed on buildings. So just something to, to keep in mind there. Now, the other big one that I have here is the 691.6. And the reason I have that there is it shows up, it gets referred to in multiple other sections. So when we start talking about voltage, um, fire, um, fire plans, uh, arc fault, things like that, the requirements of 691.6 are referred to over and over again. And really what this, I'm only giving you the first sentence here, so there, it goes on, but it's saying that the electrical portion of the engineer design uh, shall be stamped and provided by, um, or provided to the AHJ upon request. And so really this is saying that we need to have an engineered system. And when we get into uh, things like calculating the voltage, uh, doing things like, the disconnecting means uh, all has to be part of the engineered plan. And again, those get referred to back um, back in there. So the 691.6 does say that the uh, documentation shall include details of conformance with article 690 as they apply or other articles of the code. So again, this is, you've got other references. 690 is gonna be a pretty anchor part of the code for even our 691 systems, uh, but really the uh, having the electrical engineer stamp uh, as part of that is a is a big key. 
So I wanted to also point out, so in 691, they have an image similar to what they have in 690 for the different systems. And so there's just a simple, relatively simple block diagram, just showing the major equipment, their relationship to each other. Not always, you know, not all this, these components are going to be absolutely required. Uh, and the exact flow disconnects, all those things aren't represented here, but this is rather just a, a picture of kind of how these systems would work. So you'd have your PV array uh, coming to the interactive inverters, um, one or multiple inverters that are have the generating capacity of that 5,000 kilowatts or more. We're going to have the output of those inverters connected to transformers. Typically, we're going to interconnect to the utility, maybe not at a substation. It might be at the um, on the transmission lines. It might be on distribution lines. It, it all depends on your situation. So that's why the substation thing is op optional there, but we are connecting to the utility typically at a medium voltage. And so getting into sometimes a new realm for people in terms of the medium voltage. And these are just things where having that engineered design is really important. A couple of the other sections I just wanted to point out kind of high level, uh, 691.8 talks about the voltage, the maximum system voltage. And again, it refers back to the engineer design. So we're going to be able to use an engineer design to calculate that maximum system voltage. An interesting one for disconnection or isolation means is 691.9. And the disconnect or isolation means doesn't have to be integral with the equipment. It can be remote. And of course it needs to be documented. So again, pointing back to 691.6. And then we have a couple other ones that are uh, talk about arc fault requirements. You don't necessarily have to follow the 690 rules, but you do have to have fire mitigation plans if you don't follow those specific 690 rules. And then the last one I like to point out to folks is how that we have um, fence bonding and grounding requirements. Code, then this is 691.11. References back to 250.194, which gets into the overhead lines, uh, um, the proximity to substation, exposed conductors, things like that, what the grounding and bonding of your fence line looks, needs to look like. So there may be some requirements there uh, as opposed to just a large scale farm where you have a fence as you know, purely to keep people out uh, where the grounding and bonding requirements would be different. So if there's overhead lines, if there's exposure, if there's you know substation components, then your grounding and bonding is going to look a little different. So just have to look back at 250.194 if that's the case. So that's pretty much 691. I know it's a really quick overview of a short article, but it's good to know some of those key highlights, especially if you're working on those large systems. Um, we do these code corners on various topics. And so if you have questions, comments, uh, feel free to reach out to us and we'd be happy to talk to you. If you have project specific questions or design and engineering needs, we'd love to uh, chat with you and see if there's a way we could help. Thanks. And we'll talk to you next time.